This is Ozark. What are we up to now? Meeting number 11 or something, isn't it? 13, 13. 13. Okay. Well, that's a good number. Um, so there's an agenda on the, on the wiki and the topics that we've got at the moment or the topics that um, people have noted was to announce the official OSARC logo. Uh, Yen is not here, but we'll do that anyway, I think, because it's starting to get used. Uh, we've talked about maybe sometime having different times of day for these monthly meetups, just to make it easier for some people in different time zones. Um, and I've got some news and ideas to talk about uh, with organizational structure and governance. And now I ask if anybody has some other topics that they already know they'd like us to add, and I'll add them here. Because we're probably going to run out of time today. Does anybody have anything they want to add to this list? No? Good. And we will have probably enough time. And the logo, who, who's been quite active in that? I've been on the periphery of that discussion. It's mostly Yan. Does anybody else want to present the logo? Very exciting. So look here. I just have to remember where we've used it because there is a page where it's already used. Oh, there's one of them, for example. I've put it in there. There it is there. It's on this page. <clears throat> yes. So this is the, the new uh, logo with a bit of branding. So now we've got some colors and some graphics. Um, so we can start going through the different parts of the website and the wiki and everything and trying to give them some uniform um, appearance. That would be good. I'm pretty sure that's all there is to say about that. If somebody would like to be so kind as to make a little design guide, um, that would be great. Just listing like what those colors are and what that font is and sizes and all that kind of stuff. Um, that would be a, a useful thing to have so that we can start using that in, in any other material we put out. Um, yeah. I do you want to talk about alternative times and days for our meetups? Yeah, yeah. So all this, let's say, started from because uh, we have also invited the uh, open project that is going to do, uh, they're going to do, let's say, a presentation in the near future. And uh, they asked to do it during business hours. And uh, so we we wanted let's say it was something that we wanted to consider maybe alternative times alternative days so the idea is to to have a, like a doodle to have a doodle and uh, see uh, the members of uh, osr and mostly the guys that uh, the people let's say that are attending mostly the meetup to have a, to have a vote to have a vote for uh, what can be alternative uh, days and uh, times and uh, possibly some of the meetups uh, would be held let's say not uh, saturday or uh, not uh, during uh, this time at eight o'clock uh, utc uh, i don't know if there's uh, something else to say i mean uh, Yeah, Maybe it doesn't make think, sense now to ask people here what they think because then it's going to be <laughs> too much mess, I guess. But uh, I should get uh, these doodle goings and uh, we should uh, publish them in the forum, I would say. Yeah. Any comments? I guess we're just, we're just going to need to try it a few times. Yes, As you say, we, to we say can... something. Hello, guys. Hey. Hi, we can hear you fine. Um, 
I think, yeah, it's it's a bit, uh, well, we may think it's a bit late, but it's still a bit early for people who are in Australia, I think, for example, uh, like most and stuff, they, they're not attending yet. It's a bit early there. So maybe if we do it during the week and we can have a, a later session, perhaps uh, on Wednesdays or something like this. Well, Malt um, doesn't sleep though, so it, it says in the chat that Malt doesn't sleep, so I don't think that's a problem. But, but <laughs> do you think you're seeing? I mean, it's a myth. There it's a myth. Many, he sleeps. If if we open up like a uh, uh, the time zone website that uh, that shows different time zones, maybe it can help us decide on a on a different time. Unless this one suits us. I mean, I'm okay with it. I just noticed that a few people are missing. Yeah. Yeah, but I think definitely in the, in the morning, let's say, it will be uh, European early morning, something like that, right? Say again, sorry, I didn't understand. The alternative then would be early in the morning uh, for uh, Europe, something like that. I well, think... in that case, maybe if it's Saturday, it's uh, Monday Europe. Yeah. Oh, I think so we, we, can't, we can't agree on something here, though. I, I think what makes what would make sense is to have a, a, a quick discussion, a quick discussion on the forum that gives us maybe five, six, eight different options, and then put them up in a in a frame of date form there, and find out what works for people. Um, the tricky part yeah. is making sure that people actually go in and express their opinion. But we have we have some kind of idea what time zone people are in, so we can. So we can try. So I, I definitely suggest that that's, that's something to take to the forum and to put up on a poll. Does that sound uh, workable? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Since cool. we're here, we could make it. But what about the others? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's like that's like when the board of directors get together and vote on whether they should have a pay raise. It's easy to agree when you're the only ones there. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Right. So the next thing is about money. I think we should uh, quickly form a board of directors and get funding and um, run away. So the next topic, that's me being facetious. So the next topic was the um, uh, structure and governance discussion there. Um, and and uh, you're seeing s suggestion on the, on the, agenda there was because we, we had a discussion and we thought it would just be good to present something that sounds a little bit more finished. Uh, so one of the things I started doing, um, if you go onto the page, let me just share my screen again. Um, this one here, there we go. There we go. So if you go into OSR supporters and organization, I'm, I'm working on trying to have this. Everything's only two or three clicks away, right? Um, so I've, I've written this, which is I went through our um, organization and governance thread, which is quite long, and pulled out all of the stuff that seemed like it was um, something that, that should be kept and discussed and, and tried to push it all onto this page here. So anyone who thinks it's interesting, it's actually an inter it's a very interesting read, if you ask me. Um, and I've added a piece at the bottom now, um, which is my idea of a roadmap. Um, and to make it look good, of course, I started with things that we've already done, because we've already done quite a lot. Uh, we've got the website and the forum and YouTube and Twitter and all that kind of stuff is up. We've now held, sorry, that's there's 12, now we're on to 13 monthly meetings. Uh, we're getting noticed. We've actually got a community. We've just, we've uh, distributed some tasks and responsibilities. Um, the whole logo branding thing is just about, just about landed. Um, so the, the thing that I'm looking at at the moment is uh, looking at some funding streams. So what I've got, what I've got now is, uh, 
a liver pay account. Um, let me see if I can find it. It's a really interesting system. Uh, and basically, basically it's just a distrib distribution channel. So you can't, um, it can't hold money for us, but it can accept donations and pass them on. Um, so, so what we've done for the moment, for example, we've looked at how much Dion is already spending on our infrastructure and put a figure on that. Uh, so when people donate money to this, when people set up a recurring donation here, it will it will draw those donations until this 20 Australian dollars is covered and then it will stop drawing. So if people have um, donated a lot more money, it will just stay there. But as we start having more things, like if someone comes in, for example, to get a speckle server up and running or we want to buy a, a hosted big blue button domain or other things, then we can just slowly raise that to, to reimburse people. But this is only useful for doing that kind of reimbursement uh, because there's no organization behind this. This is just redistribution of funds, right? So that's that's the usefulness I see of this. At the moment, this is not listed because I need to get Dimitri on here as well. Um, yeah. So that's that's like the first part, so that we can we can actually reimburse people for the costs they have now. This is not for anybody. Um, yeah, so that's only for that purpose to start covering our costs. Um, and as we do that, I suggest we start thinking about what sort of other infrastructure could be useful. Big blue button is one of them. Um, something else I want to talk about in a second might also cost money. Just starting to think about some of those things. Um, the next one, I suggest that the, the next task after that is creating a legal structure. Um, let's have a look here. So the ones that I think are going to be useful, I would I definitely suggest reading this page. Um, yeah, if, 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 if you want to get involved, do please read the page. <laughs> So these ones here, Open Collective and Software Conservancy, are the two that seem like the most obvious places to start um, if we're not going to jump out and make our own foundation. Because in, in both cases, they provide some legal services and some financial services um, and some legal status to make things work. For example, once you get accepted in one of those, you can accept money as a 501c3 or 501c6 charity, which a lot of um, companies like because companies don't like paying tax. Um, so that makes it easier to accept um, donations there. On the on the other side, of course, we a lot of us would have some reservations about putting our work under. American legislation and American privacy laws. Um, so that's so that's also an issue. Um, like with so many issues, so if anybody would like to help looking into the, the consequences, that would be great. But it's basically, as far as I can see, Open Collective um, gives quite a lot of administrative help and Software Conservancy does the same but they're older, they've been doing this for longer, um, and, and they have quite a bit of legal weight, like part of, part of their tradition is um, copyright enforcement, actually going out in, in a dialogue with people who are um, either misusing or creating problems for um, free software, open source uh, projects. Um, and it is my humble opinion that um, that might be a wall we run into at some stage. We're dealing, because like in the discussion we just had with the with the, the people from Speckle, we're, we're up against some companies who've got very deep pockets and whose interests don't really align with ours. 
So that's one of the reasons why, um, that's one of the considerations I think should definitely be um, thought about there. So that's basically my suggestion of um, the, the order we need to do things in. Uh, there was one thing more I wanted to suggest. This, this whole section here, I might need to tidy up the way it's written. Um, ba -boom. Methods of organization. So this area here, uh, this is really interesting. So this is about how we make decisions. Um, if you have an opinion on how we should make decisions, if you think we need a dictator or we need to have more anarchy, then this is kind of the background reading that you need to do so that we can have that discussion um, and add other things in here. But my basic my basic thought is that we should jump out into this platform that um, Ryan suggested, which is basically um, it's basically a forum type structure, but built into the forum are lots of tools for lots of tools for collaborative decision making. Um, and weighing ideas up against each other and making formal proposals that you can vote on and like formalizing all that kind of stuff uh, in a very transparent and, and flexible kind of way. Um, so my suggestion is that, um, and it'd be good if you guys can say whether you agree with me. Um, my suggestion is that, that I make an account there find out how that works and get going. I haven't found anything that's obviously better. Um, so I think that would be a great place to start so that we're ready, so that we have some sort of structure to start taking decisions on what money we want, what infrastructure projects we want, what projects we want to support, um, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm very aware, like Dion just got that $15,000 grant, right? If we start getting large amounts of money, we need to be we need to be mature enough to handle that money without <clears throat> without bickering about the way that we make decisions. So that's kind of what's um, what's interesting me there. But I've been talking for a while now, so I'm going to stop and hear what people think about all of that. Who's first? Go ahead, Yasin. Oh, thanks. Um, I went through this open source collective uh, thing to try and understand this, which seems like a great idea, but I wanted to understand more about what the requirements were. What do we need to to start this, for example? Yeah. The interesting thing with them, um, I started reading quite a lot about that. And what I, what I met there, which I thought was actually really good, was they say, if you're thinking it might be interesting for you, write to us. Let's start talking about it. And they're just like, you know, if we don't think it's a good match, we'll tell you. Like, well, that's cool. Okay. All uh, right. Because they, they actually say on their website, you may decide that this is not a good match, and that's great. We will have a better picture of whether what we're offering fits what people need, and you'll have a better picture of what we're offering and what you need. So I'm like, shit, cool. So if people agree that it's worth talking to them, then I then I want to just start talking to them um, and say it's something that we think is interesting, and let's talk about it. Because if you look at their members, they mostly have software projects, but they also have some um, umbrella projects. So some projects that are not making a specific piece of software. Uh, and I kind of think that's that's quite important because we're a, um, that's more who we are rather than a software project. Um, we're probably going to have lots of spin-off software projects, just like Sharon IFC is now. It might have started here, but it's not. It's not us. I mean, it's not going to be called OSR costing or something. Um, yeah. Just turn on your okay. mic and talk, Dionys. They made the distinction. Sorry? Sorry. 
Go ahead, Yasin. Sorry, sorry. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. No, I was uh, responding to Stefan that, uh, yeah, the, the, the possibility, let's say, that uh, if you have uh, some pledges from, uh, from companies, even mm-hmm. from our companies, let's say, or whatever, that uh, the possibility to have, uh, let's say, an invoice that uh, you can uh, present for your taxes is very, is very important. Because, okay, as long as we think about 10 euros per, per month, let's say, personal donation, it's okay. But uh, if we talk about uh, 500 or uh, 1,000 euros, uh, if uh, I don't have an invoice, I'm going to pay also 40% in taxes. It, it's it's yeah. a pity, let's say, to to have uh, then this extra amount. So I agree that it, this would be a big incentive uh, in general and uh, yeah. also for small companies to to be able to be showcased as uh, promoters of WESARC. And uh, so I think that uh, anything that can go in that direction uh, will be will be good. Yeah. So it's considered as a charity thing when you do an open collective, uh, or is it the foundation or collective? I'm a bit confused. On their website, they show distinctions between Open Collective Foundation, Open Source Collective. Their their lang yeah their language is just a mess. It takes a while to understand that they they are they are themselves a collective who offer uh, a structure so that you can be a collective, and some collectives use that structure to be a collective for other collectives. So it's, it's it it gets quite complicated. You just yeah. So that like okay, there's so a particular one the there. Sorry, what you say? They show you the way. Yeah, yeah. And there's a particular one there, which is called the Open Source Collective, uh, I believe it's called, which focuses on uh, software projects. Um, and if I remember correctly, there is a European Open Source uh, Software Collective as well. Um, so it may be it may be relevant, for example, that we have... Um, something with the software conservancy if if that feels like a good match which gives us charity status in the us um for financial reasons but we might then choose to have um our our assets and our and our paperwork and everything and a european basis instead if we think that that's more appropriate the way that the the, the legislation is and the way that they handle data Uh, so I'm not even sure it, it, it's practical to just have one. I don't know how that works. Um, but there is this, uh, there is on the page there as well some examples of other organizations that would be great to reach out to. The Blender Foundation, because the Blender Foundation, they're constituted in, um, in Holland. Well, how, how do they accept American donations? They, they, must have a, they must have some ch- registered charity status over there as well. How do you do that? No idea. But if I can say something, I mean, uh, from my perspective, I don't think it's a difference if uh, it doesn't have to be a donation, let's say. I am paying, as a company, I am paying something. It can be, I'm giving this money as long as I have an invoice, let's say, that says that, okay, there is my VAT ID and I have given this money. So I'm not talking about... uh, giving something to a charity let's say it is uh, just money that i paid for my company and uh, i have uh, the invoice you know and i can present right, it but... as a tax reduction because uh, it is uh, an expense so i don't pay tax on it that's what yeah, yeah. at least that's what is uh, what i mean let's say yeah but they're, they're different things i mean one thing one thing is is having it as an expense that you can claim against as, as a business expense. That's one thing. Um, and that's useful for businesses that want to donate. It doesn't help individuals who want to donate. Okay, yes. For, for individuals to be able to claim it against their taxes, it needs to be a charity, right? Okay, this I can understand, so, but uh, what uh, is... Uh the balance i mean how much are we going to get yeah. from businesses how much are we going to get from individuals i think from individuals yeah. there are small amounts 
Yeah. And uh, well, I mean, there are there are lots of discussions to have there, and that's where I think it's it's that's why I think it's really important that we have a robust way of making decisions. If you look at Greenpeace, for example, they don't take corporate donations. You can only donate to Greenpeace as an individual, and that's how they've decided to manage potential conflicts of interest between big donors. They just say, well, we don't have big donors. We only have individuals. Um, and that's one way to do it. I'm, I'm not suggesting we do that, but it's an interesting discussion, right? You know? Yeah, otherwise, uh, I mean, you can always uh, set a non-profit organization in one, uh, in one yeah. uh, country. And I, I mean, I, I'm not sure whether, whether all these terms, um, foundation and charity and non-profit, I, I don't know even if these are all, if they mean the same thing. In some countries, they might mean the same thing. In some legislations, they might be completely different. I don't know. I just know that all tax departments will be on your on your back really fast if you try and claim something in, as a charity when it wasn't. Um, and if we want to be able to go to large organizations or, or for that matter, rich individuals, then, yeah, we just need to find out what the best way is of doing that. I don't even know if, if Europe has a, a standardized way of recognizing charities. I, I have no idea. So that's part of the work that somebody needs to do. Um, if I have to do it, then it's just going to take a long time. <laughs> I, I personally, I wouldn't call it charity. I don't know. I don't like so much the word charity for what we're doing. Non-profit, yes. But charity yeah. looks like uh, the charity. Yeah. Some, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> sounds a little bit funny. <laughs> Non-profit, I think, uh, in all the countries you can uh, you can have a non-profit uh, organization. Yeah, but I think we discussed. I mean, we're talking about language. What we need to talk about is legislation and tax rules, and then we can call it whatever the hell we feel like. Probably, I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, because um, it would be good at some stage. It would be good at some stage if, uh, if, in my opinion, it would be good. If we had a funding stream that meant that we could, for example, after GSOC, that we could actually go to some of the GSOC students and say, you know, we think what you've been doing is really great, looks really promising. Um, would you like to keep working on that? We'll pay you for another three months um, and all that kind of stuff that just we're just going to have to sort out a whole lot of tax issues um, before we can even think about doing all of that. But other stuff like saying, um, saying to, to Dion when his computer burns out, well, we can buy a new computer for you or um, going to a conference or that kind of stuff. Uh, because there are there are more, as far as in most countries, there are more relaxed rules about gifts rather than giving people money, right? So, yeah. But this is all the sorts of details that, that we, that we, need to talk to just with someone who knows what the hell they're talking about i know enough to know that that, that is dangerous i don't know enough to how, how to fix any of these problems but the the good so the good thing with libera pay there is um it's, it's not a it's not a donation and we can't we can't give invoices or anything but but the system is there and people can put small amounts of money and we can just see what happens um, and if we can see that a little bit of promotion gets quite a lot of donations, then, well, let's just go and, and pay for a big blue button server and tell all of our friends projects that they're welcome to use it as well. If people want to give us money, let's find some sensible things to, to use it on. Yeah. But again, then, then we need to work out how can we send that money directly to, to, to big blue button? Right, like find one of their developers who's on that system and just say, well, can you give us a free account and um, and and we'll direct some of these uh, donations directly to one of your uh, developers or something like that. So just to understand, uh, for uh, for example, if you have some existing donations in the LiberaPay of uh, Dion, now it's going to go in this or we, do, we, we should have... Is it a new account that you did, let's say, 
specific sorry the, so the what i've what i've done in libra pay you have um there's there's three different systems um and we're now using two of them so one system is the individual that's not hard to understand fine the other one is a team so i've made a team called osr <clears throat> and in the description of that team i said this team is to reimburse people for their infrastructure costs any money above that just won't be drawn so you so you can sign up for a recurring um, donation but all you're really doing is pledging money because it will only draw what what the people in the team have agreed that they're going to take because we we can't start using we can't we can't pay people we're not an organization that that's but if, right. for example, I donate uh, 10, 10 euros per month, they're going to take this money and they're just going to stay there if uh, they're not spent, right? No, 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 okay. because Libra Pay doesn't hold money. Okay. They only transfer money. So, then so that's why I say... It... Okay, so you have the potential to spend, let's say, more if you have more people that are pledging the possibility to... That's right. Okay. That's right. So what I'm thinking is if we go in and say these are our current expenses and we start by focusing on you know just who we are the the group of us and and um if enough of us say well we're going to give whatever dollars a year we'll see what the number is and then okay well maybe we'll have to give this many dollars a year until we until we meet our basic costs and that's going to have to be our personal money going from place to place um, and once we've done that we can we can talk about okay well how about if we support this developer over here will you provide us with some um some more infrastructure whether that's a server or a big blue button or a, a bim server or whatever it is um, but yeah the money doesn't get drawn unless the people in the team um so each team member each team member uh let me share my screen again and you can see it yeah it's not very intuitive um, which screen is it? That one. Yeah, that's the one. So you can see here, for example, Dion's put in twenty dollars, and I've put in zero dollars. So what that basically means, um, and that's that's a weekly number. No matter how much people donate, only twenty dollars will get taken. And if you've put in $20 and Cyril's put in $20, <clears throat> then one week it will take yours and Cyril can go out and buy an ice cream. And the week after, it'll take Cyril's $20 and you can buy an ice cream instead. So it, 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 takes, it, it goes around the carousel taking people's donations to meet these pledges here. So if, the ple if people have pledged a lot more money than we've agreed to take, then it just doesn't take it out of their bank account. Um, yeah, and the the alt, um, but the other thing you can set it as, um, where is it? I don't know where the button is, but you can change it to be um, automatic. <clears throat> so you can say that any money that's left over goes to this. So what we can do later when we have a proper organisation. We can we can keep using this for infrastructure and just say any money that's left over goes to our our, our non-profit yeah but as i've written in the text there people should really go and look at our donations page and find a project that they want to support because yeah that's that's what we're here for anyway that's that's what i've been working on all these people and nobody's saying anything. Okay, have a good sleep, Cyril. I'm getting tired too. Um, does anybody, Stephen, if you're still here, do you have contact with Torn? Takes a while to see if people are still here, doesn't it? If you move your mouse everywhere. Oh, Stephen okay. might not be hearing us at the moment. But yeah, it'd be interesting to hear from the people behind the, the Document Foundation and KDE and um, GNOME. And, yeah. 
Okay, great. I think I've said what I needed to say about all of that. Yes. So I will uh, keep doing that and I'll keep trying to find out who has infrastructure costs so we can put them on there and probably in a week or so um, I'll make that go live and I'll add that link to our donation directory so people can find it. Um, uh, and then we can, yeah, and we'll just see what happens. I'm not sure how much we want to promote it. We might just wait and see what happens because once it covers costs, that might be enough for now. Um, and I will get in touch with um, the Software Conservancy and start a dialogue with them um, and start having a, having a look at the other options there. Anybody who wants to join me for that, that would be good. Do we have, uh, do we have other things we need to discuss today? I don't think so. I think we are uh, we are good to go. Yeah, we're getting tired too. Okay, well that must be uh, that must be a wrap for today. Um, I only so I thought we'll try one. I'd like to suggest we try one more thing um, to the next meeting that just at the end of because I was at a uh, what's it called. <clears throat> Uh, if, sustain you want, OS. if you want to stop setting so we can see you. Uh, yes. Oh, I've heard, I've been listening to an interesting podcast called Sustain OS, which is all about making sustainable open source software projects. See you, Massimo. Um, and they do something quite nice, which is a couple of the people who host the podcast, um, they just mention some things that they've seen in the last week or the last month that caught their attention that people might want to look up. Um, I think we should start doing that at these monthly meetings. I didn't understand. Um, Sorry. Can you repeat? I didn't understand. So I've been hearing this this podcast, and one thing they, they do at the end of the podcast is they just spend a few minutes with each of the people on the podcast mentioning uh, one or two interesting things that they've heard about during the last week or two or month. Um, not explaining it, just giving it a, a very quick sentence and enough information that you can look it up on the internet. Um, and I think that'd be really interesting because like, it seems a bit strange that we've had this great presentation today, but we haven't mentioned what you guys are doing on Sharon IFC, for example. I mean, it just seems so obvious that somebody should just be in 30 seconds saying, oh, and we're working on this great project. You can read about it here. And these are the people who are involved yeah yeah so about the discussion the end of it of the second part right yeah well at the end of part one at the end of part one okay yeah have, have a think about that that's that's a suggestion no it's nice because yeah. actually i was also the last uh, two months ago, two weeks ago i was present in the in the speckle uh, meetup actually and they did the nice thing in the end. Okay, maybe if there are 25 people, maybe there is a lot, but uh, they had this, what they called community stand up. So uh, yeah. each one starts to nominate the next person that uh, maybe he presents himself or he can say something, as you say, that is interesting. And then uh, this guy nominates the next person and the next person until uh, all everything everybody has said something has introduced himself this was uh, actually nice so it kind of similar to what you say yes for, for sure it could be nice let's say to have something uh, something how many say, people are happening? in there how many people are in there what do they call them a community meet or something that's their wednesday night thing eh? No, this was uh, the, the meetup that they, ha they had. They had the meetup, and they, they this session they call it they called it uh, community stand up. Yes. Was, was the whole meeting was a community stand up? Was it? No, no. It was uh, at the end. Let's see, the last. Yeah, uh, I'm just trying to work out. But who who was the group of people there? Was that lots of guests, or were those? Uh, there was uh, the speckle team plus. Uh, whoever, let's say, from uh, the community was present. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
How many people was that? It was like uh, 15 people, maybe. Oh. I don't know. I remember very well, but something like that. Stevens is 20. Okay. How long did that take? I don't remember the. But the. Okay. Well, why don't, why don't we start by just keeping it simple? Um, like what, what, I've, what I've done before at other meetings is made the whole thing where, where a couple of us like that would be you and I, because we usually talk before these meetings, we just choose a few things that we think somebody should mention, and then we just ask those people to mention it. Because <laughs> in yes, that way... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it feels some... spontaneous, and they get to quickly say something, but we also know that somebody is actually going to say something. Um, and if somebody else has something to offer, then they can quickly do it. Because we need to... I mean, it's tricky creating that culture of yes please say something but you you must be quick because <laughs> because five other people want to use their 30 seconds of fame okay cool what's the next one what's there what's the next um meetup uh, the next meetup uh, i haven't announced it yet but uh, frederick is going to present uh, his work on uh, Blender, he has a, an add-on on Blender, and I think possibly also another for Revit Blender something. Uh, this week uh, I'm waiting for some material and uh, I will make the announcements. Okay. And uh, as, as soon as we have the alternative dates, then we should be able also to book a open project. Yeah. Then we're waiting about uh, Liber uh, OpenS card. I saw your message. Yeah, and not OpenS card, but the um, QCAD, QCAD. Uh, QCAD and LibreCAD. Yes, I, I, I'm not. I'm not very hopeful there. Um, and, uh, I have a couple other uh, things in my mind, so yeah, we we're going to send okay. some more invitations. Yeah, I, I I would suggest you do that. But I'll also talk to Ryanie, who's the main developer of Libra DVG, um, because it, well, that's that's the other post you saw with Solve Space and and FreeCAD, because it would be interesting to hear him talk about the, the like I don't when he talks about how finished something like that is, I don't really know what that means. Like, does that mean you can open some files but not all files, or some files almost open, or? You know, because that, yeah, it'd be really interesting to hear how he, how he's going with that project. From what I saw, it looks like what this other library, let's say, is good to read, but maybe to write, uh, not yet. I'm not sure. I think something like that. But anyway. Yeah, I don't think they're. Pro they're I don't think they're focusing on writing D DVGs. Yeah. But like I haven't been able to see anywhere if anyone's done a test suite because I want to see a test suite. Um, so that because if we if we want people to take these sorts of things, uh, open source solutions that involve DXF and DWG seriously, I think we need to be able to show a test suite so people can go in and they can and they can see here's the DVG, here it is after it's been converted via this library. To all of these DXF versions, and here it is as a PDF, um, so that people, because you, I mean, you know how how it's just it's just so critical that you have a hundred percent trust of those sorts of conversions, otherwise you just don't touch it on a real project. Um, I mean, it's fine when you're designing your own house to build out in the suburbs, and nobody else is going to attack you with a lawyer, but it's it's not okay on paying projects. Yeah. Okay, cool. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, Aronis. Is there anybody else there who... It's always funny that there are so many people when we're finished, but it's they don't have anything to say. Yes, but you're I still am. there, you're seeing. <laughs> What's that? I didn't even see who it was that laughed. No, <laughs> no. Was that you, was Anton? Just, yeah, I just said I was tired. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, great guys. Thanks everybody. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so much. Okay, see you around. Until next time. Yeah. Bye bye everyone.